What is up, Divine Masculines? Uh, today, we have a reading for, um, we have a, you know, a new reading. I had a dream last night. Of course, it seemed like all of my, um, it seemed like everything started off with me saying, oh, I had a dream last night. <laughs> I'm having dreams like Martin Luther King up here, player. I'm telling you. Okay, so in this dream, it was like, um, there's this, um, this karmic, right? And they, what it was is like, there was this, this, uh, for me, it was like an ex, okay? So one of my exes, they, uh, was watching what I, it's like they've been like remote viewing, watching me, what I, what I've been doing, like through the astral plane and stuff like that. <clears throat> and, uh. Lately, like the read the like uh I had a um a download come through to let me know like what was really going on with that, like why this person keep watching and why this person keep trying to um trying to watch me or whatever it may be. And uh, come to find out oops, I didn't mean to do that. Come to find out this person or this karmic, or this ex, or whatever it may be, this person that's holding on to us, they are trying to hold their spot in line. That's basically what they're trying to do. So, you know, they, like, uh, remember I told you that they did, like, some, um, they had some, like, work done, like, some magic or whatever. Well, with the, the thing that they asked, the, apparently what they asked for was for everything to go back to the way it used to be when you and that person was together. You see what I'm saying? And that's why the practitioner was like, well, I can't reverse time. Nobody, no practitioner can reverse time. You know what I'm saying? But maybe if I take from this person what they had or block them from all the new things that they acquired since y'all been together or make y'all feel, you know what I'm saying? Maybe then, <clears throat> maybe then, this person will go back to what was going on or whatever. And um, I had one car fall, so I'm gonna hold on to that. <laughs> Maybe then they'll come back to you and things will go back to the way it used to be. But in reality, it didn't work out like that. Because you, what it was is like, some uh, some kind of way, if you got set back and you ended up, like maybe you had to go back to a Excuse me, a job you had to do, I mean, a, a old job, or you start hanging out with an old friend, or whatever it may be, it, it it's like, um, the best way to put it is like, uh, even though you went back, or you got backtracked, or whatever it may be, it still put a block up, like, say, for instance, like, you know, you started talking to a, a friend you used to talk to in the past. By you being being with that person or talking with that person or sleeping with that person, whatever, whatever it may be. By you doing that, that made it where this ex couldn't come in like she he or she thought they could do. They thought that if they if everything that you acquired since they left was taken from you or blocked from you or you were uh, mentally blocked some kind of way to keep from seeing the goodness or uh, what was for you or whatever, or your purpose, that they will be able to come back in and, you know, play that role like a villain in a sense, where it's like, oh, I thought, yeah, you thought you was gonna be better without me and all this other stuff. So basically, this is all about them not feeling good about themselves. It has nothing to do with you. It's just that they don't feel good about themselves. And so they're trying to project it out onto you and try to hold a space in your life that, is already filled. Already filled. That spot or that void or whatever, it's already filled. You've already filled that void. So, uh, and they say the best way to separate from somebody is to let go within. Once you let go inwardly, it's felt outwardly. You know what I'm saying? Like, once, once it's done, once you uh, let go of something inwardly, the external is easy, okay? So I'm pulling some cards around that or uh, whatever message that the Most High wants you to uh, know at this time. Um, I'm going with the traditional uh, Rider Wade deck today. 
Um, I found a deck, but I didn't realize it was in Spanish. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's Spanish. That's what we're doing today. It's Spanish. Look at that. Okay. So this is the card that popped out. This is the Emperor in Reverse. Okay. This right here is letting you know that that person is losing their power or authority over this situation. Like they have some kind of exaggerated power or authority over it. You know, because they found this creative way to make you feel like you were blocked or make like make it seem like you were stuck or uh, even, you know, did little things to make you so focused on what's going wrong that you didn't see what was going right in your, your world, you know, in your life. That was the goal. But, you know, you're definitely dealing with somebody who's abusing their power, okay? They're abusing their power. Um... Let's see what else we got here. I think I'm gonna pull these three here. Oh, well, four came out. So we got the Magician in Reverse. We got uh, the Knight of Wands upright. We got the Justice card. And we got uh, the Death card in Reverse. So basically what this tells this, for me, by, you know, we have in the, uh, the Death card, the Magician card, and uh, the Knight of Wands in reverse. It's kind of like, there's like the, whatever they were doing, it didn't work. Like it, it's like it, it didn't work like it was supposed to. And it created this new beginning for you because of the way that this person went about doing it. It's like it created an opening for you to progress forward. And this time, you know, justice is on your side, though. So you really don't have to do, I mean, I, I keep emphasizing you're not having to do too much. But <clears throat> whatever this person was doing, especially uh, with trying to keep you stuck, like now that you're aware of it, this this magic, it had like this magic and this, uh, this like this, this magic that they use, even though they used it in a foul way. It had, it's losing its power, okay? It's losing its grip over you, okay? It lost its grip over you, you know? So, so yeah, you're definitely going to see a new beginning coming in. New beginning, especially from that, you know, phase or whatever. But also when I see this right here, I think about your business, you know? I think that uh, you've been toying with an idea, but you just haven't gotten it to paper or whatever it may be. That's because you're focusing on what's going on right now, especially with this person. And it's hard to, it's hard for you to focus on what you need to be or where you're supposed to be and focus on what's in front of you at the same time. And basically that's all they're doing. They're doing something like this. They're just putting this up in front of you. And now only thing you can hear is my voice. You see what I'm saying? So when I move this out the way, now you can see all of them. You know what I'm saying? I just happen to pull this one, but. Yeah, look at that. This card here is death is a betrayal card. So yeah, this is what this is like a stagnation card too. You know what I'm saying? So that's exactly what they wanted. They wanted you to be like stagnating. It's not so much about hurt, harm, and danger, but it's all about being overwhelmed with all these uh, thoughts and stuff that you don't move, that you feel like you know that you're stuck because this person is stuck and like this person is stuck. Okay, and I, like. I hate, that's the thing, like, I hate keep referring back to this person the way I do, because it seems like, you know, for me, it's like, wherever your mind goes, that's where your energy goes, so I'm gonna try to put a little spin on this uh, message to try to, you know, try to see if we can, we can shift it to where it's like, where you're thinking more about you, you know what I mean, because we already know we gotta let this go, you've already let this go within, um, this person tried to keep you uh, overwhelmed mentally, um, you don't like from let's see let's see where are you okay where where are they mentally where's my collective mentally here we go we got three cards here put these over yeah see look you just left this tower moment you left this tower moment you're no longer indecisive but it has got you thinking about the past though the good things about the past you know what I'm saying? And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing about, you know, being nostalgic or thinking about the past or whatever, how things used to be. 
And, you know, but the thing is, is that better days are ahead. You know what I mean? If you walking forward, looking backwards, like you ain't go really, you know, um, be grateful or thankful for the days that you have today until tomorrow. Sometimes tomorrow is too late. You know what I mean? You don't want to wait till tomorrow to be grateful for today. Or look back three, three, four years late uh, from now and be like, man, those days when I did this, this, and that, those were really the best days of my life. You know? Let's look at your business. Yeah, let's do that. Let's see what's going on with that. All right, Spirit. What advice can you give us about the new ideas and uh, business ventures that's coming up? Let's see what's going on. So for this, there's something you're, look, we got the eight of cups. You got the, uh, I still have to count them. <laughs> That's bad. That's bad. Oh, wait, I got a seven there. Okay, so it should be seven of coins. One, two, five, six, seven. Okay, yeah, seven of coins. And you got, uh, what is that, a uh, page of cups. Okay. So, um, when I put all of these together, this this is like, for me, it's like, you're walking away from something that you put a lot of energy and effort into. It's something that you put a lot of energy, a lot of effort into, okay? And it could be like, like I don't know, you could be a rapper. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you could have put a whole bunch of effort into getting a, 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 a song together or trying to work with somebody Next thing you know, there's conflicting schedules or there's like, you know, there's a lot of like, there's a lot of uh, detours and things of that nature that come up. But I'm just here to let you know, like, you know, um, when it comes to your business or whatever endeavor or venture that you uh, decide upon or uh, work towards, this, um, it was like Marcus Aurelius said, Marcus Aurelius once said that an impediment to the path is also a part of the path. So obstacles that you that you come across in your path is a part of the is it's a part of the path that you're traveling. Okay. So that's something that you need to know before you know you come by. I don't know if you should completely walk away from this venture or not, but it does show you walking away from it. You know, and this is definitely a couple of your ancestors. Your ancestors are, you know, guiding you somewhere else, but they're also watching you and you know, you see the moon up here. There's not necessarily a smiley moon either. It's a sad moon, you know? So I don't know if you're following your intuition by walking away, but I can say that you put a lot of hard work into this. You put a whole lot, you put a lot of hard work into this. Honestly, I don't think you should walk away from that. Look at all the, look, you only like two, two pinnacles away from having a nine. Or, you know, three pinnacles away from having your, uh, having your, uh, you know, wish fulfillment, your uh, end all be all, okay? Honestly, I think you might should, honestly, I think that you should keep going. This right here is other people. See these other people? They're all gathering information about you in a sense. You know, they're, it's like your emotions aren't into it the way that you, you that it used to be. These people know it, but they wanted, they wanted it to be like that. Where you, where emotionally you're not satisfied with the work that you're doing. You know what I'm saying? So, in a situation like that, I would say like, you know, find you, like, like I said, you know, just, just take some time out. I know that your schedule is busy. I know you go through a lot. I know you're dealing with a lot. Some of y'all probably got kids. Some of y'all got families. Some of y'all got businesses trying to work, trying to get through COVID, trying to do all this other stuff. It's not easy, but a schedule, like, you don't have to keep doing this, but schedule at least one day out of the week. It doesn't, you know, whatever day, just one day out of the week to soak it, like, soak in a tub with Epsom salt and, you know, listen to your music or just reflect on the day, what you want to let go of, and, you know, just do that once. You know what I'm saying? Spa day. It could be a spa day. It could be like if you like the if you like sports or whatever, you know, one day doing your sports stuff, one day getting your hair done, getting your nails done. You know what I'm saying? Something just kind of like splurge on yourself for once. You know what I'm saying? Whatever it take, whatever it take to recharge you. Okay. 
And not just that, but also one thing that may help you in this business venture is you revert back to something you used to do as a child. That's the ver that's the vibe that I get right now. It's like it's something that you used to do as a kid that you haven't done in a long time. It could be playing like a board game. It could be playing like you know, it could have been it could be anything that you used to do as a kid that you love to do. It could have been something that you love to do with your cousins. It could have been something that you you know, it, it, no matter what it is, if you have kids, do that with them. Or if, you know what I'm saying, if you an adult like me, you know, do that. I'm going to be honest with you, like, I have a Nintendo. <laughs> so, like, all my old Super Mario games and stuff like that, like, you know, I play it. I, play, well, I just got it, but yeah, I play it, you know, so, shoot, yeah. It takes me back to my childhood. It's something that reminds me of my childhood. You know, so on those rougher days or those days it's hard to get by, it's, it's good to revert back to your childhood because your childhood is uh, where you learn to be who you are. Okay, but well what else we got here, Spirit? Look at that. See? That's exactly what I'm talking about. You got the three cups reversed. You got the two of wands. What's that? The, uh, no, page of wands reversed. And... You got the five of uh, wands. This is a lot of wine energy. You're probably dealing with like a fire sign or somebody that's like fire, like a Leo Sag. I mean, like a, a Leo Cancer. It could be like uh, somebody on the cusp, that kind of energy. But either way, you know, all of this conflict right here is depleting you. It's not like, it's not letting, it's not making you feel joyful or happy anymore. Because Three of Cups is about victory, celebration. You see these three women here? They're celebrating. But you, you feel defeated because it's in reverse. Look at this. This is conflict, constantly fighting, not knowing when the battle is going to end. And look at that. That's the uh, Page of Wands. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is stifling your creativity. The Page of Wands, the page is a, is a card of somebody who's new to something. He's, he's a student. You know what I'm saying? And that 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 uh, wine energy is, you know, that's creativity. So this conflict that you're going through is stifling out your creativity. It's stifling out your happiness. Like, yeah, it's, it's a lot. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's a lot. But it's designed to be a lot. Okay? It's designed to be a lot. Specifically for that reason. Look at that. This is your creativity right here. If you follow your creator, your more creative path, look at that. Then you got the page of swords here. And you have the, uh, what is that? The uh, king of uh, king of swords reversed. Is that the king of swords reversed? I believe this is the queen of swords reversed. Like I said, I bought this in Spanish and... Uh, <laughs> but it is Spanish. I was in a rush. I was in there in a rush. Like just like I said with that uh that energy where it seemed like, you know, my mind was clouded or whatever. My mind was definitely clouded when I bought this deck, you know what I'm saying? But like I'ma get through it. <laughs> but anyway, this is somebody who abused their power and they're looking to gain as much information on you as possible. They're spying on you. This is definitely somebody who doesn't mean you any good who's spying on you. And they're trying to steal your ideas in a sense. The ideas that they remember, I was just talking about how you feel like you're constantly in conflict and it's stifling out your, uh, stifling out your energy as far as like your creativity. The reason why is because this person knows that it's a good idea, so they're spying on you so they can take your ideas and become successful at it. You know what I'm saying? They know that your ideas are good. They know that your business ventures are good. They know that you are going to be a very successful person. But they, the way that they feel about it is like there's only room for one person at the top. And... They can't have you there too because you'll be competition. You see what I'm saying? You'll be competition for them. 
But if you're not destined to do it, guess what? It's going to fail. <laughs> it's gonna fail. It's gonna fail. And then look at this. See, look at that. That's you right there. That's the nine of pentacles I was talking about. Remember I told you you was only a few pentacles away from that uh nine of pen that uh nine of ten of pentacles. Look at that. Is that a? Uh, you got. You got a uh, what is that? Roses on the uh, or flowers on the, on the garment, but it remind me of uh, the Mars symbol, being decisive. Being yeah, being decisive. Cause look, this is you. Like upright, you're walking away, but in reverse, it would be more like a situation that has to end. Okay. But either way, it's not a bad card. I still see it. Honestly, this is one card that I still see the same as far as like being upright or reverse. It's still like, you know, uh, uh, letting you know, like, you know, you need to turn your back onto that. You need to just turn your back on it and just walk away from it. You know, because if you don't, look at this. It's stopping you from love. Look at this. This is just creating blockages for you. That's all it's doing. It's trying to use like these, like, the more you focus on it, the more mental blockages are coming up. And it's blocking you from your love. And it's also going to try to stop you from your, your pinnacles and your coins coming in. Look at that garden. That's a beautiful garden there. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, some fight, like, I'll put it like this. How did it go? Um, when it comes to somebody like what we're dealing with right now, uh, we're dealing with a lower uh, frequency person, lower, I want to say lower vibration, but this person is on a lower frequency. The difference is, is that when you're on a frequency, it's consistent, you know, and a lower frequency is consistently low, okay? When you fight with somebody that's on a lower frequency than you, when somebody, when other people observe you fighting with somebody on a lower frequency than you, they don't know whose frequency is the lowest. You, just, you see what I'm saying? Nobody knows whose frequency is the lowest. You for fighting with them or theirs for instigating with you. Because let's be honest, in order for you to fight with somebody, you have to come to their level. You have to walk, step down. You know what I'm saying? And this person is going to do everything they can to bring you down so that they can fight. But a part of the magic that they use requires that you fight with them or be conflicted in some sort of way. That's why it's best to just, yeah, just do your best to just cut your ties with it. When you feel overwhelmed about it, just, you know, when you feel overwhelmed or you feel like you can't focus on nothing else but this person, it's time to step away and just, you know, do something that you love to do, you know? Cause look, look here. That's that uh, Eight of Swords, High Priestess in Reverse, and that Chariot card. You see what I'm saying? Like, this alone, this right here is somebody who's trying, like, basically this is uh, mental energy. This is uh, trying to keep you mentally stuck. You see, you on the other side of them swords, you can just walk out of there. But the thing is that by you being blindfolded, you don't know which way to go. And that's the whole point. You know you're surrounded by swords. But you don't know if there's someone there holding the swords or not. You see what I'm saying? And this person wants to keep you stuck there. That's just like what I was saying before. They want to keep you stuck there. This is this is somebody who this is definitely a black magic card right here. This is some kind of magic to keep you stuck. But it's fast and it's fast acting. Okay? It's definitely fast acting. It's not one of those slower kind of active energies. Now the reason why. It's important on if it's fast or slow acting. A, a fast acting energy ex, uh, burns its energy out quickly. But when you have, when you're using magic and it's on a slow octave, like say if you're doing a ritual every year and you do it for like 20 years, that's going to have more power and potency than one that you do every day. Like, I'll put it like this. If yeah, that, then one that you would do like every month or... No, no, no. I take that back. One that you do every year isn't going to be as strong as one that is a, as a, uh, 
uh, ceremony or whatever that you do every single day. When you do it every single, like say you can do some every single day for like a certain amount of years and then you stop. When it does kick in, it's going to be very strong and potent. Okay. Now, if it's something that you do like every other week or every other month or whatever like that, and you still do it like that, that's not going to be as strong as the one that you're doing every single day. So, but this right here, like I said, this is a fast acting, it's a fast acting energy. Okay. It's a fast, it's, it's like, this is something that was like improvised because, and what that remind me of is like, maybe there's a specific time that this, you know, spell or ritual or whatever has to be done. And by you just not thinking about the person or you just doing your own thing, some kind of way, it was like the one of the uh, requirements for this to work wasn't met until right before the spell had to be done. So this person had to hurry up and do this work. You see what I'm saying? And it's not always spell work against you. Sometimes it's like a plan against you. It could be like, okay, I'm going to this person. It seemed like they're doing good. Now I'm going to pop up in their life on this particular day because I know, you know what I'm saying? Like, and the day that they pop in on your life could be the day that you got this really important meeting. You know what I mean? So it could, it's, it's just last minute, very quick energy where it's like something to throw you off. So it doesn't have to be just magic. It's just the person behind it has a very dark heart when they're, you know what I'm saying? They got a really dark heart is what it is. But ultimately, victory is in your hands. Victory is assured. You got the Six of Wands here. You got the card of Sagittarius here, which is Temperance. And we have the card of Seven of Swords here. Okay, so even though this person is stinky, see that's that's exactly what that is, you know. By them having a dark heart, they're really really sneaky. But be patient, do be, be as patient as you can. This is the card of patience because it's state, you know, patience and balance because victory is assured. Victory is assured. I'm just letting you know, like, if you ever like, oh, I don't know how to get through this, it's coming. This person called Ace, like I said, like, like I was just saying about that, that last minute tactic, that last minute tactic. Yeah, it's not going to work. That person pretty much just hurt themselves. You know what I'm saying? So, but yeah, this person is desperate on trying to hold a spot in your life. I don't know what you did. You must have put it down, player. <laughs> you had to put it down. Like, I'm telling you. Tell you, you had to put it down, player, because uh, if not, most people don't normally do that. You know what I'm saying? If you think about it, like, if don't nobody, if, if don't nobody tell you anything else, I'm gonna tell you, like, off rip, like, it takes, like, if your enemy is addicted to you in a sexual way or addicted to holding on to you, like, that is that's true power. That's true power. Because no matter what you do, they're going to do everything they can to try to keep you from leaving. They're going to do everything in their power to try to incorporate themselves in, in your life, in their life. Like they, they doing anything, many and everything they can to just be next to you right now. That's power. That's power and that's authority. Look at that. That's you getting your mental clarity back. This has to do with like a contract or something, man. Some kind of contract. And this right here is the Queen of Wands right here. Oh, I definitely got that one right. All right. <laughs> okay, so I was right. Because the other one was uh, was the uh, Queen of Swords. Okay, so this is definitely, uh, this is like a Sagittarian kind of energy. Uh, you know, but uh, with that mental clarity though, especially this mental clarity that's coming in, guess what? You're gonna be able to see it for what it is. You're gonna see you like you're gonna cut through and you're gonna put an end in whatever, whatever it is or whatever, you're gonna put an end to that. You're gonna put an end to it. Your mental clarity, like you recognizing you being able to recognize what kind of game that this person is upon, that right there is gonna end that contract. And that right there is gonna bring you 
the abundance that, you know, is for you. And it's going to help you, you know, it's going to uh, make space for your uh, spiritual gifts and um, your, uh, what is that, entrepreneurial uh, abilities to increase. Like, you gonna, you going to uh, have different creative entrepreneurial well, you're going to uh, have creative entrepreneurial ideas. There we go. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> All right, what else we got here? Yeah, that person feel left out in the cold. That's what it is. They want to be with you. That's what it is. They definitely want to be by your side for richer or poor. That's what it is. They want to be next to the cool kids. You see what I'm saying? They want to be next to the cool kid. You left this person out in the cold. You stop focusing on those other options and you let God give you an option. That's what you did. God brought something to you and you accepted it and it took a lot of burdens off your back. This person can't handle that because they wanted you to fail. They wanted you to be the, uh, they wanted you to be like uh, the queen of swords in reverse and bitter and hard hearted and all that good stuff about uh, what was going on here. But you're not, you're not like that. You ain't even cut like that. You just let God, you see what God is offering you or you let God give you what he, you know, you let your, let God bring to you this cup. And it took a lot of burdens off of you, especially since that person left. When that person got out to your life, all them blockages came. Like all them blocks just start opening up. Like you was probably getting job offered. And if you still with that person, like if you sleeping with somebody right now that you know is jealous of you or whatever, cut they ass off. Off. O F F off. Let they ass go. It's a leap of faith for some people. But I'm letting you know right now, like, you know, if you know this person don't don't mean you no good, let them go. Because like that right there. It's probably the one thing that blocked your blessings. One thing that I had to learn, especially like in relationships and stuff like that, I was like, if I'm dating the wrong person, or if, you know what I'm saying? If I'm dating the wrong person, a lot of blockages start popping up in my life. Like I won't be able to make as much. I won't be able to be where I want to be. I always feel tired, always feel drained, always feel, you know what I'm saying? But, um, when I let the, like, once the relationship is over or I decide, okay, I need my own personal space, I need to let this go, I need to let that go, I need to cut everything out, work out, it don't even have to just be a person, it could be a job, it could be, uh, uh, affiliation in a group, you see what I'm saying? It could be anything, friends, family, but once you cut that off, you gonna notice, like, you, like, yeah, you gonna notice different roads and blocked I mean different roads opening up to you and by you being a cool kid like I said everybody want to be next to you even if they gossip about you and stuff like that that's definitely a sign that they want to be next to you look at that king of pentacles in reverse ace of, I mean uh yeah that's the ace of cups and uh what is this? The uh, Knight of uh, Pentacles. These are all money cards right here. I just spoke on that. This cup of love that this person is coming in offering you. Look, this like I said, they want to hold a spot in your life. They want to offer you this cup. They, In their eyes, it's the best cup that could ever be given to somebody. Because it's from them, right? Wrong. That shit going to take your money away. On a, it's going to it's gonna drain you of all your balance. Like I, I just said that. It's going to drain you, like, you know, because these, these uh, pinnacles also represent, like, the earth. That's that's a representation of grounding, abundance. Like, you ain't going to be grounded. You ain't going to have no money. Like, you just going to be just, just, ugh, just. That's the only way I can explain it. Ugh. <laughs> oh, like, you ain't no, you ain't no explanation for it. Just, ugh. You know what I'm saying? You walk around, your lips gonna be all dry and stuff and look like my fists. <laughs> your lips gonna be looking like that, like two fists hooked together, you know what I'm saying? 
Cause you, you know what I'm saying? Cause you all dried out and stuff and tired and man, I'm telling you, bro. Nah, we ain't about that over here. We definitely ain't buying. it. Okay. Uh oh. Ooh. I had a car fall just a second. Just a second. Let's see if we can get some explanations for it. Yeah, we got a Wheel of Fortune in reverse. We got a King of so King of Wands. And we got uh what is that? Nine of Wands here. Like when you get Nine of Wands, like Nine of Wands is more of an energy where it's like uh, you defending your beliefs. You know what I'm saying? This is a recuperation from defending your beliefs, okay? That's you recuperating. You know what I'm saying? This is a this is a time of being active, it's a time of resting. And you know, resting your power, just resting your power, okay? If you get overwhelmed, find you something that you like to do. And that's another thing, like I said, I keep saying find something that you like to do, but let's, you know what? Maybe I could put it in a better perspective than what I got. Like, first of all, find something that you love to do. And then try to find a way to make money off of it. You see what I'm saying? Now that right there, like you'll never work a day in your life that way. Cause I'm gonna tell you what I did. Like I like traveling, okay? But I also like getting paid. So when I put them together, what I ended up with was like truck driving, okay? Or you could end up doing like a travel agent, you know what I'm saying? Or whatever, whatever. So after I did that, I went to school, I did all the stuff I needed to do, I put in the groundwork, and now that's what I do. I drive trucks. I drive trucks. This is what I do right here, it's just my hobby. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is just something that I thought was cool that I like and I just I don't know, just kinda of fell into it. I like it. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I was saying, like, you know, by you being the king, that's how you rest in your power though. That's how you rest in your power. When you do something that you love to do, you'll never work a day in your life because you're always excited to go to work. You're always excited about the new problems and things that come your way and problem solving that, that's affiliated with it. Like you're excited about it, okay? Your attitude matters. If your job affects your attitude, try to find you something that you love to do. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't get caught up in all that. Like you, right now you in your power, okay? You don't have to jump out there and make an immediate move, but think about some stuff that you love to do. If you love making jewelry, yeah, do that. You love to do it. Put your heart into it. When you do that, I'm, I guarantee you, like, you're going to make money. The money going to come. Do what you love to do and the money will come. See? Look at that. You got the higher fan. Look at that. Oh, I just said that. That's the page of, page of Pentacles. And look at that. King of Cups. See what I'm saying? Like I said, the King of Cups, he's a, he mastered his emotions. Okay? When you master your emotions, the whole world, like the Hierophant, the Hierophant is somebody of authority, of religious authority. You know, in this car, it just happened to be the Pope. But in your life, it will be you just governing your own senses. Having authority over the things that manifest in your life. And it required that you, you know, do that from an authoritative place. And that authoritative place will be having your emotions in check. You see what I'm saying? Just chilling, vibing, coming from a good place, a happy place. And if you know, and I just said this, remember that I said that the, uh, the pages are people who have to go out and learn different things. They're like students. That's what this person is. He's a, he's a student of money. It could be finance. Okay, whatever it may be, but by him being a student and him having his emotions in check and approaching the approaching uh, his business in a manner where it's like, like he he's he's definitely happy because he's doing what he loves, but he's also studying what he loves. He's he's studying it in a grounded way, and he's keeping his emotions in check with it. And look at that, he mastered his emotion. I mean, he mastered the world around him. When you master your world within, you master the world around you. So, yeah, if you was ever questioning about if you should go and learn something new, yeah, learn something. Whatever it takes to get you where you want to be, where it's like 
you learn to you if wherever I mean I'll put it like this. If like um when it comes to uh doing what you love to do, take the time to invest in yourself. There was this book by uh Stephen Covey, and uh it was uh seven uh habits of highly effective people, right? One of the rules, one of the habits was uh, sharpening the saw, okay? Now, if you can't imagine, like, having this uh, saw, and you got, you're trying to cut down a tree with this saw, right? The saw is dull, and it's going to take you eight hours. It, like, it say it's going to take you eight hours to uh, cut this tree down with this saw. And then somebody comes along and say, hey, why don't you just sharpen a saw and then cut the tree down? And you're going to say something like, well, if I sharpen a saw, that's going to take me four hours. It's going to take me four hours to sharpen a saw. But the thing is, is that even though it may take you four hours to cut the saw, uh, to sharpen a saw, it might take you one hour to cut that tree down with a sharpened saw. So, yeah, whenever you, whenever you get a chance to invest in yourself and sharpen your saw, do that so you can cut these trees down. And when you cut these trees down, you're gonna be happy, you know, be happy with, you know, I ain't gonna say be happy with yourself, but you're gonna do it in a, in a way where it's like, you're not strained or stressed out about it. You know what I'm saying? Um, I guess I'll post some more cards. Let's see what else we got. See what else we got coming in here. Bam, look at that. Nine of Pentacles. Seven. I mean, ooh, why I say nine of Pentacles? <laughs> nine of Cups. Seven of Cups. And the Lover's Card, right? So we we already know what this means, right? We already know what this means. You doing what you love. That's go that's gonna be your that's gonna be your wish fulfillment. Look at him. He's not even paying attention to the cups back there. He already know they're there. He already know he got what he... You already know he's, he, his wishes are, become, are fulfilled, right? But he's not chasing things that he desire. There's a difference between these two cards right here. This one is being like unfulfilled within. And you got all these desires. There's all these things that you want to do here, okay? It's all these things that you want to do. You no longer have this um like this this uh repressed I mean this 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 repressed desire to do all these things because look you've already got it you got these seven cups and some okay and when you do that look at that you see the smile on his face he's doing it and it seemed effortless but it's really hard work it's it's hard work but by this person doing what they love they do it with a smile on their face and they make it seem effortlessly. And then that right there is bringing in the lovers. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah. Definitely go for it. And, uh, you know, go, yeah, do that business thing. Don't, like that karmic, that karmic gonna be there whenever you come back. That karmic gonna be there. Like a wet puppy begging you to come. Please let me back. <laughs> Please let me back. I'll be good. <laughs> I'll be good. <laughs> All right. So now uh, that concludes my reading. I guess it's time for a prayer, right? All right. Bow your head. Close your eyes. Heavenly Father, thank you for coming. Thank you for watching over us. Thank you for keeping your hands of protection around us. We thank you. We thank all the archangels, archangels, the seraphim, the cherubim. The uh, powers, the thrones, the principalities, the virtues of the Lord, the thrones of the Lord, the wheels of the Lord, and all the beings of the Lord for assisting us, keeping your hedge of protection around us. At this time, we call forth the archangel Sendelfine to open up the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing of, or pour out a blessing of abundance over my um, collective that are business owners, not those trying to get over on people or anything like, or cross watchers trying to dip in, but those who genuinely listen and those that genuinely watch. Bless them, Lord. 
Open up the floodgates of heaven and allow our change of sun to find a part of blessing over their heads. Let them see thriving in their businesses. Let them see an abundance of money over their lives. Let them increase them, Lord. Increase them and increase them a thousandfold over on that. Bring them ideas in the night. Send forth the Archangel Raziel to assist them to, and seeing through the um, the games and the uh, clouded thoughts that the karmics may send their way or may implement against them in any way, shape, or form that they might be able to secure the bag. Lord, bless, the, bless my collective that they secure the bag, that they be able to see the truth for what it is and, ex and uh, exert their power as necessary. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I pray, Lord. So I say it, so it shall be. Amen. I love y'all. Catch up with y'all later. Peace.